Hey, it's Becky from Patchwork Posse. Today, I am going to show you how to string quilt. This is so perfect if you have a bunch of strips that are like random widths. So you've got leftover jelly rolls, you've got leftover cutoffs from yardage or whatever. Even cutoffs from fat quarters, fat eights, you name it. So with this process, you can use any of those strips. All your blocks come out to be the same size in the end, which is perfect for easy piecing and finishing. Also, I'm going to give you a hint on how you can add a secondary pattern with this using one fabric in each of the blocks. So to get started for your string piecing, you are going to need either um, a muslin or just some leftover fabric that you have from another project. Maybe it's fabric that you really don't care for this is a perfect time to use it because it's going to be hidden in the quilt. You're not going to see it. And um, it's a great way to use like cheap or old or just ugly fabric. Um, you do want to make sure that if you use light colored strips, that whatever is the fabric that you're using doesn't come through. Like if it has a pattern that it doesn't show through the nice fabric that you're putting on top. So you'll need either um, a piece of muslin or that piece of fabric. I've cut mine to eight and a half. And you just need to make sure that no matter what you use for your foundation, that it is the same size for all the blocks that you begin with. The other thing you can use is paper. And so a paper comes in eight and a half by 11. So just trimming it square to eight and a half square works great as well. Just know that if you use the paper as your foundation, it's very similar to um, paper piecing and you will need to remove the paper prior to finishing your quilt. The other thing you're going to need is your scraps. And so these are scrap strips. String piecing is perfect for using these random leftovers that you have Maybe they're cut off ends. This is not two and a half inches. So we've got thinner pieces. We've got wider pieces. Um, it's just, you know, leftovers that we didn't use in our project. So this is the perfect scrappy project um, for using all different sizes of strips. What you do need to make sure is that your strips are long enough for what, when you are going to need them. So I do have a few pieces that are smaller. They're not the full length and this is just fine. So if I have a smaller piece, I can use them closer to the ends here because you don't need a full eight and a half, 12 and a half inches for that. Now the longer pieces, um, work great and when after you put them on you can just give them a trim and continue using that strip that's left over for those smaller areas. So the first thing we're going to do is um, place our first strip right in the center and you can use a glue stick um, just uh, to glue this strip down, you just need to hold it in place. You can use pins, but I use, I find that a glue stick just works really well for this process because I don't have any pins while I'm sewing. So the next thing we're going to do is just randomly grab from our pile of fabric and we are going to put it in place. Now, if you look at this, this strip is just barely long enough on the ends and I'm gonna say it's too short because if I turn this over it's not gonna be long enough to cover this white foundation so I can use this for the next piece but for this next piece um, I don't want to use that I've got this great green strip and I am going to use that so when you place this down you want to make sure that your piece goes past whatever foundation size you have. So I don't want to um, trim this quite yet, so I've got a long tail over on this side, and that's just fine. So what I'm going to do is just lay this right sides together on that center piece. 
I'm going to take this to the machine and I'm going to stitch from one end to the other using a quarter inch seam. Now, while you do want to watch that you're using a quarter inch seam, it's not um, critical. And so this is a great project for beginners or even for kids to learn how to sew straight lines just because it doesn't have to be exact because you're going to be folding this back. And if you have a wood presser, I've got the magic seam wand here. I've got a link for this in the description. Um, you can just take this over to your machine and use it right there. Now, you can go ahead and iron this, but it just moves a lot quicker if you just press this with your uh, wood presser. Now, at this point, I can trim this off if I want. So I can flip it over to the other side and I can just give this a good whack. I'm not gonna get close to my foundation yet because I'm gonna do the trimming at the very end when everything is sewn down and secure, but I don't need this long tail coming back and forth to the machine, so I can just trim it outside that edge. Now I'm going to grab my next piece and I am going to sew that on. So now I know that this piece is long enough now and I can go ahead, lay this right sides together and take this to the machine and sew this. Again, if you need, go ahead and pin this a few times to secure it, but it's easy just to stitch it down, flip it, and then continue. Now that I have the one side done, I can go ahead and start with the other side. So I'm going to just repeat the same process, placing my fabric down and then flipping it. Now, I wanted to point something out really quick here. I've come to the end and my piece was a little short and so I can still see my foundation here and I don't want that to happen. So what I can do is instead of removing this piece and finding a new piece, I'm just gonna add a piece right on top of it. So I'm going to find a new piece of fabric here we go. I don't want to sew right here because that is right in the corner. It's going to leave seams right in the corner. It's going to be super bulky. That is not ideal. So what I'm going to do is place this further down in and I'm going to stitch along this line. I'm not going to worry about this fabric right now. I can trim that afterwards. I'm going to keep my seam away from that corner so I don't get stuck with a lot of bulk in that corner. All right, so I'm gonna push this back. I've got plenty of coverage. It's not in the corner it's really well. And then flip it over, give it a trim. Now what I can do is go back here and I can, I'm gonna fold that foundation piece underneath so I don't trim it and I'm going to lay it on here and then I'm going to trim that extra fabric so I don't see it um, behind my new fabric. So now I can open this up. Now I can take this and give it a good press. Now that it's pressed, we are going to trim this up. To trim this up, all you need to do is flip this over to show off your uh, foundation piece. If you have a large squaring up ruler, that works really well because then you can do two cuts at the same time. Now I'm just going to line this up so my ruler is on the edge of the foundation piece that's underneath. And I know it's eight and a half, eight and a half. So I can kind of um, square this up as well to make sure that it's the right size. And then I'm going to just trim both sides.
And then because it's the rotating cutting mat, I can go ahead and rotate it twice, adjust my ruler, and cut it again to the eight and a half by eight and a half. Now, you might find that your foundation piece shrunk a little bit. So what you want to do is make sure that you are cutting eight and a half, eight and a half, or whatever the size is that you want. So as you can see, my fabric is just a little bit further the found than the foundation. And that's great because now I know that this square is the correct size. And if I went off my foundation piece that was a little bit shrunk with all that sewing, I would have blocks that would not be equal. So when you are squaring these up, make sure that you are cutting with your ruler the right size, not necessarily um, going off what your foundation piece is. So if you need to make adjustments, make adjustments. So now my block is finished. I can complete additional blocks. I've got a link in the description for um, fun layouts that you get to play with. And I also talk about this center piece. Now, if you want to do a fun pattern, um, in addition to this, which is a little bit crazy, it doesn't give your eye a place to rest, what you can do is this center piece is always the same fabric. So you can choose this to be a background piece, a dark, a light, um, or the same print with each block that you make. So that gives your eye a rest in the pattern and it adds another um, kind of dimension or secondary pattern to your quilt. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and in the description is a link to a pattern that you can make using this technique.